I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, turn with me, if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 6. As we come into 1 Timothy chapter 6, we are seeing here that it teaches us our spiritual duties. And uh, we saw um, in verses 1 through 5, we saw the spiritual duty of servants to their masters in verses 1 and 2. And then we saw the duty of separating from false teachers in verses 3 through 5. Now we are going to see some duty in regard to money and material things. And uh, we see here in these verses, he refers to them as servants of God, and any true servant of God must understand their duties in these matters. So let's read what verses 6 through 10 have to say about our duties in regard to money and material things. First Timothy 6 and verse 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us there let us be therewith content. And they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare, and in many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So as we come into these verses, we see, first of all, that we're reminded of the truth that godliness with contentment is great gain. May I remind you that uh, if you're not godly, if you're not content with Christ, then you'll never be content. There is no contentment found in the things of this world. And he says here, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So uh, we understand that our contentment comes from our godliness. Our contentment comes from our relationship with God and from walking with him. And if I don't have contentment there, then I will not have contentment anywheres in my life, no matter how hard I look for it, no matter how hard I find. But if Christ is my contentment, then really it doesn't matter what I'm going through, whether it is bad or whether it is good. If Christ is my contentment, I can be content. If Christ is my contentment, it matters not. If I have much or if I have little, I will be content. Notice what it says in Philippians chapter 4, and verse 11, Paul's writing about this same subject to the church of, Thess of uh, Philippi. And he says there, not that I speak in respect of want. Philippians 4, 11 and 12. For I have learned. Notice contentment is something that is learned. I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and suffer need, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So there we see that whether we're abased, whether we're, you know, whether we have nothing, whether we have lots, um, that we can be content in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first key is contentment is found in Jesus Christ, and godliness with contentment is great gain. And, and one of the reasons why that's where our gain needs to come from is the simple truth that possessions are only temporary. That, uh, you know, the things that we have come and go. And we can't base our contentment on that. The Bible says in verse 7 of 1 Timothy 6, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Probably one of the best examples of seeing contentment coming from Christ and not the things that we have is Job. You read um, Job chapter 1, and you see all that Job lost in that chapter. And we understand that Job was a very wealthy man. That he was a man that God had blessed with a very great farm. He had a great family. He had all kinds of great fortune. And in one chapter, in a moment of time, all of that is taken from him. And he finds out just how temporary that possessions are and how quickly they can flee away. And he says in verse 20 of Job chapter 1 through 22, it says, Then Job arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. So there we see that, yes, Job was feeling the effects of his loss, of his family, of his fortune, and of the fire, most of all, the family. But then we see there that his contentment is not wrapped up in those things. His contentment is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And that, that's where his trust is. And that's why he says in Job one twenty one, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God 
foolish, foolishly. Job was very wise and he was very discerning when it came to the things of God. Possessions are only temporary. Your contentment comes from Christ. Then in verse 8, we are to be satisfied with the necessities of life. It says, in having food and raiment, let us, there, let us be there with content. He said, listen, if you've got food and raiment and a roof over your head, you have all that you need. You have the necessities of life, and you, mu you need to learn to be content with these things. And sadly, many people know the price of everything, but they know the value of nothing. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So our contentment comes from Christ, and then as we come into verses 9 and 10, we see the danger of materialism. It says there, But they that will be rich, or those who have a great desire for material riches, fall into temptation and a snare. Temptation or the desire to be rich, or, or rather riches or the desire to be rich can bring great temptation and can bring a great snare. And many times I've watched as materialism has led people away from God. And uh, he says here, they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Isn't it sad that some people today choose to reject the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has to offer simply for what this world has to offer. They sacrifice the eternal on the altar of the temporal. And uh, as a result, it's to the destruction, it is to the damnation of their own soul. And then materialism has its roots in the love of money. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, notice that many people misquote this verse. Many people say the, that money is the root of all evil. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Um, you know, when people have a, a love for money and a desire for more, it can lead to all kinds of evil and all kinds of destruction in their life. But then also, uh, the danger of materialism is, is that it weans the soul from the truth. It says, the love of money is the root of all evil, which some, having coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They have this greedy long, longing for more. And as a result of that, it leads them away from the faith. It leads them away from church. It leads them away from the things of God. It leads them away from the service of God. And uh, then also, it curses the soul with the pain, pains of discontentment and sorrow. It says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some have covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They think it will bring contentment to have more, but the truth of the matter is, what it does is it brings discontentment and it brings sorrow. It brings the exact opposite of what they think that this materialism will bring into their life. Friends, listen. There is no contentment in that quest for more in life because it does not matter how much a person has, they will always want more. And then with it, it brings the anxieties as well. And then we see that, as I've already mentioned, it plunges the soul into a course of sin, which will end in perdition. Verse 9 says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and in many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Friends, let me encourage you today, as we look at this, to not only see the danger of materialism, but to come to the place that you would truly understand that your contentment must come from God, and to be at such a place in your life that you walk with Him, and walking with Him brings you that fulfillment that you desire, that fulfillment that you long for, because the reason why you were created was not just for the accumulation of things, but the reason why you were created was to have fellowship with your Creator, to love Him and to serve Him, and to have a life that centers and focuses around the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you today as we close, where's your desire? Are you caught up in this trap of materialism, or does the contentment of your life come from Jesus Christ and the walk that you have with your God? Oh, there's so many practical things that we can learn from this particular text. I hope that you will take some of these lessons and apply them to your life. Have a great day, friends.